That's where most of the church is today. They came in, they sung their songs, they did their drama, they had their Sunday school, they took up an offering, their preacher delivered a 15 or 30 minute sermon. Yeah. They left thinking they had really been in the presence of God and God wasn't even in the building. All right. They don't even know He's gone. Amen. He's done moved. Amen. Come on. He moved out and He ain't there no more. Yeah. Right. That's what happened to Samson. Amen. We learned last week. Right. Time and time again, God's mercy allowed him to fill his spirit. You see, God will try and woo you to a place of repentance All right. before judgment comes. Come on, say it. Oh, God's all loving. Yeah, He is. But He's got a paddle too. Amen. All right. he, he says, those that I love, Amen, yeah. I rebuke or I chastise. Amen. Uh -huh. Those that I love. See, you don't whip your kids if you're in your right mind. Yeah. You don't whip your kids because you get enjoyment out of it. Right. You you whip them or you correct them. Maybe I need to put it like that. They'll have the welfare down there on us. That's right. You discipline them, whether you make them stand in the corner or you give them a timeout or whatever to form a discipline you have. You don't do that because it makes you feel good. That's right. You know how grandpa used to used to tell you, this is gonna hurt you. This is gonna hurt me. This is gonna hurt me a whole lot worse than it's gonna hurt you. Yeah. And you probably thought, yeah, right. But it, he very well may have been telling you the truth. That's right. Sometimes whenever I have to get after these, it, you know, I think, man, I hated to do that. Yeah. I don't get after them near as much as I should. Mm -hmm. But I hated to do that. Yeah. And God will allow His mercy to try and woo you. The Bible says the blessings of God lead it to repentance. Right. Chew on that one. Study that for a while. Amen. We always pray, God, send down judgment. Make them miserable as hell itself. And I prayed that. And I'll probably still pray it before I get out of here from some people. Right. But I wonder this morning if we could pray, God, just bless them so much All right. that they had to realize who's doing the blessing that they'll turn to you. Because right. the Bible says the blessings of the Lord lead to repentance. Amen? All right. So He'll bless you. All right. And that's what Samson went through. Amen. He felt the Spirit of God when he got up out of the bed of the harlot and he tore the, the gates off of the city wall and he ran up on the mountaintop. Amen? Yeah. He felt the Spirit of God each time whenever Delilah would say, where's your strength? And he would tell her, you know, some made-up story. Yeah. But then the Spirit of God withdrew itself. Yeah. That's what will happen. Come on. If you allow sin to reign in your mortal body, you'll wake up one morning and you won't feel His presence. That's right. Uh, That's the truth. That might get me some phone calls or a letter or an email, but it's the truth anyway. Amen. It's the Bible, it's the Bible Brother Slee said. He will withdraw Himself. He'll let it go for a little while. Yeah. He'll wink at your sin for a little season. Yeah. He'll give you a space to repent. He'll allow you to still feel His Spirit. Yeah. And He all the time, He's, he's trying to woo you. Come on back. Yeah. Look at what that is. Look what it's going to do to you. You know, He, he can't, he can't uh, wash and, and, and cleanse those things away until you begin to confess them to Him and ask Him for forgiveness. And He wants to forgive you. He wants all the world to be saved, but He can't save them until they turn to Him with a heart of repentance and say, Be merciful unto me, a sinner. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and His blood is the only atonement for my sin. Amen. So oh, He's... He's ready, willing, and able. Yes, sir. Amen. That's true. But His Spirit will not always strive with man. Amen. All He strived, He dealt with Samson. Right. Why do you think? I know that it took Noah 120 years to build that ark. Right. But considering the fact that the Lord split the Red Sea in a day, Amen. created the entire world in six days, Yeah. I believe the ark could have been finished a little bit further, quicker than that. That's right. But he gave him 120 years uh -huh. of mercy. Get ready. All the time, Noah working with the hammer, preaching righteousness. Yeah. Preaching about God. Yeah. Preaching to repent. Come on. His mercy. True. Gave him that space to repent. Absolutely. Yet they didn't. The Bible says it continued in their wicked and evil ways until the day that Noah and his family entered the ark and the rain came. Right. All the time being preached to. Amen. The Bible says Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Amen. Yes, sir. Preached for 120 years. Yes, sir. Y'all better, y'all better get right. Amen. Y'all better get right. Right. Y'all better get right. You're gonna get left. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, you don't hear that no more. All 
Right. Same message for today, because the Bible says in the days of the coming of the Son of Man, as the day, was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the, son, of the coming of the Son of Man. Amen. Get right or get left. Yes, sir. Turn to Jesus today, because you may not have it tomorrow. Yes. So we see that God's Spirit withdraws itself from sin. That's right. We have learned that sin will interrupt your fellowship with God. Yeah. We find that in the Garden of Eden whenever Adam, the Bible says that God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. He fellowshiped with Adam mm -hmm. yeah. and then sin came. Mm -hmm. And you don't read no more where God walked with him yeah, in the really. Garden of the cool of the day. Mm -hmm. That's right. We learn that if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and that His blood cleanses us from all sin. That's right. We learn there also that fellow, if we say we have fellowship with Him but we walk in darkness, we lie. Right. Meaning that our sin, unconfessed sin in our life, yep. will separate us, sooner or later will separate us from God. His fellowship, right. His Spirit. Come on. We see that with Samson. Amen. Oh, brother, really, that's all Old Testament. Yeah, but don't you remember last week we talked about the church of the layout of sins? Mm -hmm. There in the book of Revelations. Mm -hmm. I shared this yesterday with a couple of people down there. Seven times you get the you hear the word repent in the last book of the New Testament and every time it's to the church. Come on. We find the last church, the church age of today, uh -huh. they're inside the church. Yeah. They think they, they are rich, increased with goods, they have need of nothing, they believe that God's with them, they believe just like Samson. That's right. yeah. And they know not that the Spirit of God has departed. Mm -hmm. How much clearer picture can He show us than the fact that He's outside, Amen. knocking on the door, trying to come in. Come on. Say it open! Open to me! And let me come in. Yes, sir. You see, doors can't keep him out. That's right. But you can. Amen. Because he ain't going to force himself on you. Exactly. So the Spirit of God withdraws itself from Samson. The Spirit of God withdraws itself from the church of the layout of sins. And today, I want to talk to you about another place in the Scripture that gives us this example. Yeah. The Bible says in 1 Peter 4 and 17, and you don't have to go there, where we're going to, where we're going to wind up is 1 Samuel, the second chapter in the 12th verse, if you want to turn there while I'm reading this Scripture. 1 Samuel, the second chapter in the 12th verse. But 1 Peter 4 and 17 says, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Amen. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? We're going to pick this up in 1 Samuel, the second chapter, in the 12th verse. At the time Eli was the high priest, the ruler, the spiritual leader, and we find some things happening with his sons. And these things happen in the temple. And we're going to see how God will show us a picture here, a warning as it were, of what happens when you allow sin to continue. Yeah. Hey, Brother Billy, when are you going to get off of this sin thing when God lets me? Amen. Trust me, I try to get something else. Come on. But I can't. All right. He shut up everything else until we get off of this. All right. Just hang with me. Don't forsake me. Don't cut your ties off yet. Sooner or later, we move on to something else. All Amen. Right. Soon as the Lord lets us. Absolutely. It says, now the sons of Eli, I'm in 1 Samuel 2 and 12. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. Yeah. They knew not the Lord. Now I want you to think about that. These were men, they were sons of the high priest and they held offices. Yeah. Yet they knew not the Lord. Come on. Oh, we got all kinds of them. We got pastors that pastor mega churches in the United States and probably around the world. That's it. Don't even know the Lord. Yes, Same thing. Same thing going on here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Don't even know the Lord. Yes, and the Bible calls him the son of Belial. Now, does this mean Eli was Belial? No, it means the sons of wickedness. And you'll see that in the fruits that they begin to bear. Come on. To make it a little simpler for us to understand, if you read the next few verses, you will find out mm -hmm. that these men, instead of going by the way the law said yeah. to do the sacrifice and to offer it to God, and then what was left after you had offered God's part to him, then the priest could take of that which was left to feed oh. himself. Yeah. You'll find them taken before God ever gets his part. All right. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Say, well, Brother Billy, we don't have sacrifices no more. We don't have anything even comes close to that. Oh, do you remember what Malachi said? 
Will a man rob God? Yeah. Yet you say, how have we robbed God? And Malachi would go on to tell them, you've robbed me because you're taking what belongs to me. Talking about God. All right. You've robbed God because you're taking what belongs to Him. All right. See, these fellows here, here was the sacrifice. Yeah. It was supposed to be taken in and offered up to God. And the part that went to God, He got that first. Yeah. Then the priest could take, amen, Come on. and eat of the meat. Right. They need to order. They were doing things. They were doing, the, they were doing things the way the majority of 90% of the church does it today. I'll do whatever I need to do, and then I'll give God what's left. Yeah, come on. Amen? Come on, preach. Hallelujah. I hate to empty the church house this morning. I'll take me some first. All right. I'll figure up all the stuff I want to do with my money and my income, and then if i got any left, I'll give some to God. Exactly. Oh, that get me in trouble this morning, amen? amen? I got news for you. In the book of Malachi, you robbed God if you didn't pay your tithes and offerings. In the year 2011, if you don't give to God, you're still a thief. Come on, brother. Woo! My goodness. Preach. You are a thief and a robber if you do not give to God. Preach on. That's, That's what these boys were doing. Yes, sir. They were treating God as a light thing. Uh-huh. They didn't think it was important to follow his instruction. Yeah. You hear that? Well, oh, you're talking about sin of a higher degree. Yeah. They didn't think it was important to follow the outline, the guidelines that God had laid out. That's it. Give to me first. And this has been God's principle all. It is forever. Yeah. Give to him first. Mm -hmm. What kind of deal would you think it'd be? Yeah. I wish the government did this. Right. If I told you we'll just take 10% and give you 90. Well, boy, that's a good trade, isn't it? I got a hundred dollar bill up here this morning. I'm gonna keep 10, give somebody 90. Who wouldn't jump at that? Amen. Amen. That's true. If you went into business with somebody and they said, listen, all the money that we make, and this is gonna be lucrative. Yeah. All I want out of it is 10%. Come on. And you can keep the 90%. That's it. They'd probably still arrest you for embezzlement. That's right. Because 90% ain't enough. That's it. We want to make sure we get ours first. Yeah. That's what these boys were doing. Yeah. In simple old redneck Kentucky language, these boys were taking what belonged to God. Yeah. They were taking first instead of giving to God first and then following the law and taking later. Mm -hmm. Not only that, they said, you'll give it to me or I'll take it by force. Yeah. Do you hear that? Come on. My goodness. <clears throat> Drop down to verse 22. Yeah. Same chapter. Now Eli was very old, and he heard all that his sons did unto all of Israel. Yeah. Now you would think that taking from God was bad enough. Mm. But see, when that sin was left uncorrected, yeah. no discipline was placed on them. You know what they did then, Brother Sleece? It says, Eli heard that they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Now they start fornicating mm. with the women that come into the temple. Oh. I'm telling you, sin ain't satisfied till it destroys you. Amen. Sin ain't satisfied till it has you in so much bondage you can't get out. Amen. It says they begin to lay, not necessarily that they laid there in the temple with them, although they may have done this in one of the chambers yeah. of the tabernacle of the temple. Come on. Of the temple, amen. Yeah. But wherever they did it, they were sleeping with the women that came into the temple of God. Whoa, well, there ain't nothing like that going on today, is it? Oh, is that pretty plain? Yes, sir. Yeah. Huh? We 